Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Banjo-Kazooie. In the last episode, I collected enough jigsaw pieces in Freezy's Peak, but I couldn't collect the two jigsaw pieces, one in Freezy's Peak with Boggy the Polar Bear, and one outside near Freezy's Peak after I pressed the grunty switch, because I don't have access to the running shoes. There's nothing I can do but to enter the next world, which is Gobi's Valley, the sixth world in Banjo-Kazooie. In that world, Kazooie will finally learn how to use the running shoes once I find bottles. So without further ado, let's go! Alright, this is Gobi's Valley, a massive desert with lots of sand, pyramids, a few plants, and a small oasis with water. I already rescued that yellow ginger, which was pretty fast. <laughs> That is Trunker, the palm tree, and he's very thirsty for water. Unfortunately, he couldn't drink the water around himself because, well, he can't move. Trees have to stay still on the ground, and he couldn't reach that body of water. Trunker has a mouth, so I have to find another source of water around Gobi's Valley. I know where it is, but I'm not there just yet. There's a variety of stuff here to collect in Gobi's Valley and this is where the difficulty increases for just a little bit. The enemies and the surroundings may look tough, but they're easy to deal with, so just be careful. See that statue with the hexagonal ring? Fly through it and then find another one. Rinse and repeat by finding five of those statues total, and you'll earn a jigsaw piece. These statues are called the Hidden Rings of the Ancients. It's a cool title, and so are the statues themselves. Dang it, I missed it! By the way, the moving sand that Banjo landed in had sand eels in them, and they'll bite you when you step in there, just like the piranhas that live in the swamp water in Bubble Goop Swamp. Okay, let's fly through that statue again. <laughs> okay, that was funny. The statues trolled you when they said that their group of five will help you be grunty, but instead, they gave you a jigsaw piece. Well, you gotta collect the jigsaw pieces in order for you to get the grunty, right? So, yeah. First jigsaw piece collected in Gobi's Valley. Well, not yet though. Let's take care of the Sphinx first. Its nose is blocked up, so you have to shoot eggs at his nostrils to clear it up. Once you do that, the door that was on him will open. Oh! 
Okay, now I collected the first jigsaw piece in Govi's Valley. Next up, inside the Sphinx, so let's go. Inside the Sphinx, there's a lot of stuff for you to collect in here. Eggs, music notes, feathers, a jigsaw piece, and a mumbo token. To grab the jigsaw piece in the Sphinx, you have to ride the magic carpets all the way at the end. In order for you to do that, you have to feed these statues on the walls with your eggs because they're very hungry and they need protein. After you feed them, the magic carpets will ascend into the spots where you need to go. If you take too long, the magic carpets will descend back to their original spots, and you'll have to feed the statues again if you want to use the magic carpets again. There's a Jinjo in here, so don't forget about him. Bet you thought I was going to take fall damage, eh? Nope. Anyway, we're done here, so let's head out. Hey, a target! Break the target! and into the pyramid when the door opens. Ooh, it's a room. There's plenty of room here. Anyway, collect the music notes and the mumbo token here and then talk to the person in this room. Do you see a small basket circling around the big basket? Um, yeah. You have to poop the eggs in the small moving basket. Once you do that, a snake will pop out and stretch itself while Ruby, which is this guy in the hat, plays his music for a short period of time. Climb on the snake and collect the jigsaw piece above it. That is a great tune, bruv! Oh! Bye, you guys. Well, I found another jigsaw piece, so let's grab it. I could use the running shoes, but there's also another way to grab it without them. And that is by flying to it with the beak bomb. Oh, dang it, I missed it again. Oh well. Third time's the charm.
Hey, the music went off. Oh, there it is. Notice anything different? Well, I'll tell you. The game expects you to use the running shoes to grab that jigsaw piece. But since I flew into it with a big bomb, there is a glitch where two music tracks were playing at the same time. I first found that out when I played Banshee Kazooie on the Nintendo Switch Online. But don't worry, the music will fix itself during my exploration, so it's no big deal. What's there is there. See? The music track collision is gone. Alright guys, that is the final molehill that we're gonna see in Banjo-Kazooie. Kazooie finally learned how to use the running shoes. Plus, I've learned all the moves in this entire game. You guys already know what the running shoes do the moment you saw them. Touch them and Kazooie will run even faster than she was normally. However, you have a time limit so just be careful. Oh, whoops, I missed a switch. No worries though, you can cancel the effect with the B button. While wearing the running shoes, press the switch. Run up to the tower as fast as you can, and then enter inside. Also, it's pretty unfair that you have to watch that scene while the timer is still going. Come on. Come on, game. Well, there's nothing to worry about there. You can still make it while wearing the running shoes. Just cut the corners without stopping, and you'll definitely make it. I made it just in time, but I missed a couple of music notes, so I had to backtrack and go get them. There's a funny face on the floor, which is pretty neat. By the way, grab that Mumble Turkin first before you dive on the water to grab that jigsaw piece. Once you grab that jigsaw piece, the door will open and the water will drain into the death trap that I haven't explored yet. Also, these mummies are called mum moms, and they appear out of nowhere when the water was drained from this tower. You can't defeat them with normal attacks, but you can with the Wonder Wing. Also, don't forget to collect the music notes and the other stuff in here that you need.
Green Ginger Rescued. Awesome! There's an empty honeycomb switch right here. Press it and then it'll appear at the spot where you can find it. But I'll get that later. Right now, let's head inside this pyramid. There are tiles here on the floor with Banjo and Kazooie's face on it. But first, kill the Mum Mum because he'll slow you down the moment you set foot on these tiles. And speaking of tiles, you can flip them over by ground pounding them. And what do you know, it's a memory match game. Match the same icons on two different tiles before time runs out. Wow, we're halfway done with Gobi's Valley. It's going by so fast. Anyway, let's keep moving. Alright, I'm at the death trap right now. Well, this used to be a death trap until the water washed all that sand away. And that sand had sand eels in them. The only way you can escape is to fly out of there with the flying disc. But now it's easy to swim through with all this water around. By the way, rescue the Jinjo in this area and I recommend filling this death trap with water first. Unless... You want to traverse through it the hard way with those sand eels snacking on you. Okay, so that's not a proper way to go over here, but it's completely worth it. Hey, a camel! This camel's name is Gobi, and yes, this world belongs to this camel. He owns the rights to this valley, he owns the plants and animals in this valley, he owns the sphinx in this valley, he owns the cactuses in this valley, he owns the water in this valley, he owns the statues in this valley, he owns the pyramids in this valley, he even owns everything in this valley. The sky, the clouds, the sand eels, or whatever it is that's in this valley. He owns it all. It's his property. Well, yeah, it's called Gobi's Valley for a reason, so yeah. But anyway, ground pound that rock that chained up Gobi and you'll set him free. We'll see him again very shortly. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's an empty honeycomb piece that I skipped earlier. Be careful when flying through this cactus though. You touch it, you take damage. Oh, these statues again? 
Well, okay. I guess these statues want protein too. But anyway, feed these statues just like you did in the Sphinx. But this time, they will move sideways, so time your shooting carefully. Once you feed one, another one will show up in one of the sides. Once you feed them all, this pyramid will sprout fully off the ground. And there you go, another pyramid for me to enter. Welcome to King Sandy Butts 2. It's a death trap that's actually a maze. It would have been an amazing tomb if it had some corn in it. You know, big lumps of knobs that have juice in them. And I can't imagine seeing them in this beautiful maze. Uh, okay, enough of the corny jokes. Let's move on. Find the exit out of this maze before time runs out. If you don't escape here, the spiky ceiling that was in this amazing room will crush you and you'll lose a life. Do be careful though because you'll regret it if you die in here with plenty of music notes in your possession. Yes! We survived the tomb, even though the music was playing so fast. Speaking of the music... I had to do it. It's so funny. I will always do that whenever I play Banjo Kazooie, and I'll never get tired of it. Anyway, there's a grungy switch in this maze, and I recommend you find the exit first before you find the grungy switch. That way, you'll have ample time to explore around here. I don't know if you guys still remember or if I haven't told you guys yet, but if you die in any of the worlds in Banish Kazooie, you have to collect the music notes all over again. Yeah, it's a big punishment. I collected two jigsaw pieces in the same room. One in a coffin and the last Jinjo in a jar. That's really cool. There's only one jigsaw piece left in Gobi's Valley and you guys already know where it is. We've met this character from the very beginning of this episode and we're heading there right now so late to go. Oh, I almost forgot. There's music notes in this moving sand, so tread carefully. All right, we're here. Well, there's only one thing to do. Gotta ground pound the camel's hump. He said that he wants to keep the water for himself. 
instead of feeding Trunka with water. Jeez, what a selfish camel. The tree is thirsty and Gobi's just sitting there doing nothing, refusing to share his water. Remember guys, sharing is caring. That was the last jigsaw piece in Gobi's Valley. However, we're still not done with this world yet because I still have to look for the rest of the music notes and the empty honeycomb piece. So let's look for them. Found it. There's the rest of the music notes, an entrance to an unknown room, and Gobi again. Ground Pound is hump again and he'll spit out the empty honeycomb piece. And there you go, that's another set of empty honeycomb pieces completed in Gobi's Valley. That room in front of Banjo, I'll tell you about that later. Right now, I've officially completed Gobi's Valley 100%. All jigsaw pieces, all music notes, and all empty honeycomb pieces. Before I move on to the next world, there are a couple of things that I need to do first. Don't forget to grab that jigsaw piece from the coffin, the one that you open after pressing the grunty switch in King Sunnybutt's tomb in Gobi's Valley. Use the shock spring jump to launch yourself up to grab it. I had to wake up that cauldron first, just to get that out of the way. There's a note door here. You need 450 music notes to open it. If you have more than 450 music notes, that also works. So right now, I'm heading to the next picture frame that will unlock the next world in Banch Kazooie.
Picture complete. So the next world that I'm going to enter in the next episode is Mad Monster Mansion, the seventh world in Banjo-Kazooie. Hope you guys love a dark, spooky environment, and you'll see more of it soon. Remember the last two jigsaw pieces that I haven't collected yet around the entrance and inside Freezes Peak? Well, guess what? We're going back! Now that Kazooie learned how to use the running shoes, I can grab that jigsaw piece here in this area. That blue switch with the red feathers on it, press it. Then use the running shoes to race to the flying disc on the floor within the time limit before it breaks. Once you're flying, fly out to where the jigsaw piece is and there you go. Break this glass with a beat bomb, just in case. We're not done with the flying part just yet. Remember that rocky grunty hat that you saw while flying? Yep. We're gonna head there right now and we're gonna meet a familiar face. And that familiar face is none other than Brentilda. Wow, all three of those were very, very sus. At least we know Grunty loves eating rats. But hey, I might just feed her an electric yellow rat with red cheeks. <laughs> anyway, before I leave here, there's only one thing that I need to take care of. That's right, we're heading back to Freezes Peak to get our rematch race against Boggy the Polar Bear. Just like last time when Walrus Banjo raced Boggy, traverse through all of the gates with the running shoes, and then win the race. Ha! I beat you! There's the last jigsaw piece in Freezes Peak. 
And now I am officially done with this world. Yes! Well, there's a secret item here in this world, but I'll tell you about that later. Right now, say goodbye to Boggy, everybody. Bye, Boggy. GG. Oh, yeah, head inside his igloo, and yeah, for some reason, Boggy teleported himself into his own igloo. No idea why, but that's video game logic for you. Boggy gotta take care of his kids. Now that that's done, let's go to Mad Monster Mansion. Welp, we're back here again. Last time, I was here to complete a picture frame of Gobi's Valley. There is something about this magma area, and no, you do not want to fall in there, or else you'll lose a life. There were two other paths that I haven't visited yet. One path leads to Mad Monster Mansion, in which I'm heading there right now. The other path leads to a smaller area that Banjo couldn't fit in, meaning that I have to visit that path later. Yep, it's a little bit of backtracking, but that's just how this game is. You gotta explore as much as you can in Banjo Kazooie. By the way, knock this gate door off first before entering Mad Monster Mansion. That house down the hill has something very crucial for a certain area in Grunty's lair. I'll visit there later, but for now, let's head to the entrance to Mad Monster Mansion. And that concludes episode 7 of Banjo-Kazooie. In the next episode, I'll visit Mad Monster Mansion, the 7th world in Banjo-Kazooie. If you like dark spooky stuff, then that world is for you. And it gets even better the moment I set foot in there. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Banjo-Kazooie, I really appreciate it. Alright, I'll see you guys later.